Well, hello, everybody, and welcome back to the weekly Bible study here at King's Revival Church International. I'm Gareth, and I will share the lesson with you this week. Well, I'm excited to be here once again, and uh, wherever you are streaming from, you are most welcome today. And if you're here for the very first time, if this is your first time with us, won't you just put a comment below, uh, make sure that you like this program, and uh, we want to hear from you. We want to know where you are streaming from, and uh, you are our VIP today. It's great to have you with us, and I know that in these next few moments that uh, you will be blessed. And so those of you that are joining yeah, this is our weekly Bible study. I share a, a short lesson um, every week, every Tuesday. That is when we air this program. And uh, I look at the Word of God. We, we look at uh, various topics. But at the end of the day, we learn about Jesus Christ. Because that's what a disciple does. A disciple is a follower of Christ. A follower of Jesus who wants to become like Him. And so Jesus is our model. Jesus, we, we want to become more like Jesus. Hallelujah. And uh, the way we do that, the way we learn about Jesus is, is in the Word of God. And so today, I want us to look at the Old Testament. And if you have your Bibles with you, I'd like to look at uh, 2 Kings, the second uh, book of Kings. And chapter. we'll read from chapter 6. And verse, we'll look at from verse 24, but my focus is going to be on chapter 7. So my introduction will, will be from um, chapter 6, verse 24. I'll read a bit there, and then we'll jump over to uh, chapter 7, and then we'll see what we can get out of this text. So always make sure that when you're sitting uh, in front of your uh, computer screen or in front of your your, your um, smartphone, your iPhone, or whatever you have, your, your iPad or your tablet, make sure that you have your Bible next to you and that you can follow with me where you are at and, um, and you can take notes as you go along. So if you're there um, in verse 24, and just to give you a bit of uh, background on our text here, we, we're in the Old Testament and uh, King Jehoram he is the king of Israel, and because of the, um, the disobedience of the Israelites, because of their sinfulness, they weren't following uh, Yahweh as they, they should, and they, they were um, worshipping idols and, and, and all those things, and, and that angered, angered uh, the Lord. And so the Lord sent um, King Hadad, he was from Syria, the, Syria is the enemy, and uh, the Syrian king, he came and he attacked Israel. He came and attacked part of Israel, which was this, the context of this, um, this text is in uh, Samaria, which, which was Palestine in that day, which we know as Israel today. And so this king from Syria, he came and he attacked and he, 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 he held captive, he held siege, this uh, city, this city in Samaria. And so the king was inside the city. The people were inside the city. Everyone was locked in. They were locked in and locked down and they couldn't get out because the enemy had surrounded them. And so when you study the Old Testament, you will see that whenever the people would sin, whenever the people refused to listen to the Lord, when they um, rebelled against the Lord, when they forgot His ways, it would anger the Lord and and the Lord would, would allow certain things to happen. And so uh, it's actually His grace. He does this so that we can repent. He does this so that the people of Israel could turn from the evil ways and, and, and go back uh, to their first love, to, to, to Yahweh. And so, so we see that this, these Israelites, they were under siege. And if we look there in verse 24... And it happened after this that Ben-Hadad, king of Syria, gathered all his army and went up and besieged Samaria. So there we see that this great, this king from Syria, God allowed this king to take his whole army 
and go and surround uh, Samaria, this, this city in Israel. And there was a great famine in Samaria, and indeed they besieged it until a donkey's head was sold for 80 shekels of silver and one-fourth of a cab of dove droppings for five shekels of silver. They, can you believe it? They actually sold. You could, you could buy uh, dove's droppings. That's how desperate these people were. They were in such a bad state that they would eat um, the droppings from, from, a, from a dove. That's, that's how hungry they, they were. That's how, how bad the situation was. And if you carry on, we'll see in verse 26, Then as the king of Israel was passing on the wall, a woman cried out to him, saying, Help, my lord, O king. So in those days, the, the city walls were, were extremely wide, and um, you, you could walk on those walls. And so the king, perhaps he was going out, maybe he was praying, Maybe he was contemplating the situation um, and he, was, he found himself on the wall and he's, he's walking uh, there. And then this woman cries out to, to the king and she says, um, so he, the woman says, help my, my Lord, O king, verse 27. And he said, if the Lord does not help you, where can I find help for you? And I, I was, you know, meditating on that, on that scripture for a little while. And, and the king acknowledged, even this, this king of Israel, he acknowledged that, that unless the Lord builds the house, the builder labors in vain. Unless, unless the Lord watches over the city, the, the, the watchman watches in vain. And so he says, if the Lord does not help you, where can I find help for you? And so they were in such a, 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 a desperate place that he, he recognized that, that this is a moment, this is a time when it's only God, uh, God's intervention can turn things around. It's only God himself now that can, that, that can bring out deliverance. And so many times, with, with, within our, not many times, but there may be times in our lives where we realize, you know what, if God doesn't come through for me now, then, 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 it, it, then I don't know, you know. And so the challenges that we go through, God always intends them for our good. The things that we, that we, that we work through in our lives, God always wants that to, to either build our character or ultimately, um, he gets the, the, the glory and our hearts uh, uh, must be turned towards him. And so that's what he wanted for the Israelite people. In their sin, he wanted repentance. In their sin, he wanted them to turn to, to, to the Father. And so that is the, the heart of God, is that we always worship him, that we always look to him, that we always... Um, acknowledge him in all our ways the bible says acknowledge the lord in all your ways and he will direct your paths and so the problem comes when we don't acknowledge him the problem comes is when we are not obedient the the the, the we get attacked when we're, we're not doing what we're, we're called to be doing and so yeah he says if the lord does not help you where can i find help for you and you must understand these are the words of a king this is the, this is a king that is speaking a king who is meant to have authority a king who's meant to have power and position and status and riches the, even him he couldn't help even he was in a place of 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 helplessness and and but what he did recognize is that it is it is the god it is god who who delivers and and he needed intervention and so yeah, he, he, he says, then, he, then, then um, the king said to her, what is troubling you? And she answered, this woman said to me, give your son that we may eat him today and we will eat my son tomorrow. So we boiled my son and ate him. And I said to her on the next day, give your son that we may eat him. But she has hidden her son. Once again, you can see this is a, this is a desperate situation. Um, they're even resorting to cannibalism. They're even resorting to eating their own children. And so in verse 30, now it happened when the king heard the words of the woman that he tore his clothes 
And as he passed by on the wall, the people looked, and there underneath he had sackcloth on his body. Well, in those days, when you wore sackcloth, you would wear sackcloth when you were fasting and praying. You would wear sackcloth when you were, when you were um, prostrating yourself before the Lord and seeking the Lord's face. And, and I don't know if, according to this text, it seems like the king was humbling himself um, before Yahweh. Then he said, God do so to me, and more also, if the head of Elisha, the son of Shaphat, remains on him today. So now things take a turn. He starts, you see how the king, he starts putting the blame on Elisha. He starts blaming the man of God. He starts blaming the prophet, the prophet, you know, who spoke the oracles and the things of God. And so the king, in his anger, I'm sure he was angry and he was bitter, but he directed it to, to um, Elisha. But Elisha was sitting in his house. And the elders were sitting with him, and the king sent a man ahead of him. But before the messenger came to him, he said to the elders, Do you see how the son of a murderer has sent someone to take away my head? Look, when the messenger comes, shut the door and hold him fast at the door. Is not the sound of his master's feet behind him? And while he was still talking with them, there was the messenger coming down to him. And then the king said, Surely this calamity is from the Lord. Why should I wait for the Lord any longer so you know god protected elisha the king got angry with elisha and he sent an assassin to take out elisha but elisha saw in the spirit elisha um uh was was protected by the 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 lord and so now we look to uh chapter seven and let's see what happens in the next chapter then elisha said hear the word of the lord and this, I think this is really, really important because, you know, we understand the situation here is that is the city was, was held captive. The city was on the verge, they were on the verge of dying from, from hunger. And uh, or they were afraid of being defeated by this great army. They were helpless. They were surrounded. They were locked in. But yeah, Elisha, what does he do? Elisha, he says, hear the word of the Lord. Hear the word of the Lord. Hear the word of the Lord. And so that is where we need to go to. When we're under attack, when we're, when we're going through hell, we keep carrying on and we get to the word. We get into prayer because because. Because he says, hear, he says, hear the word. Praise God. The Bible says that faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. It's the rhema word. It's the spoken word that brings faith, that, that, that raises up our, our level of faith. It's through the word. And so Elisha um, begins to prophesy. And he begins by saying, hear the word of the Lord. Hear the word of the Lord. You see, God, He wants to say something to your situation. God always wants to speak into your life. God always wants to direct you. God always wants to, He, he is there to encourage you. God is there to instruct you. And it's the word, it's the word. It's the word that will, that will bring faith. It is the word that will bring direction. It is the word that will bring encouragement. It is the word that brings life. It is the word that will bring, the, that will bring healing. Come on. And so when we're going through stuff, run to the word. Get to the word. Hear the word of the Lord our God. Get to church. Get, get to hear the word. Sit under the, the anointed instruction, the uh, apostles' doctrine. It's the word. It's the word that we need to run to. Then Elijah said, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord, tomorrow about this time, a sayer of fine flour shall be sold for a shekel and two sayers of barley for a shekel at the gate of Samaria. So what is, what is um, Elisha doing? Elisha is prophesying. He hears from God and then he speaks what he hears from God. And you know what? In those days, um, you are only a true prophet if what you said came to pass. In those days, in the Old Testament, if you said that you were a prophet and you spoke words and it didn't come to pass, they would put you to death. There was, they had the right to kill the prophet who did not speak right words. And so you, you very be, make, make sure that when you say 
But we, you know, when you, when you say you prophesy, you better make sure that you, that you are speaking the word, you, that you're speaking the truth. And so, yeah, e Elisha is saying, hey, tomorrow this, tomorrow this time, things are going to change. Tomorrow this time, your situation is going to be totally different. Hallelujah. And so the word brings deliverance. Come on, the, the, the word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Praise God. This word will bring deliverance. This word will bring encouragement. It is the faith that will overcome the world. And so he, he, he says that things are going to turn around. And so an officer, verse 2, an officer on whose hand the king leaned answered the man of God and said, Look, if the Lord would make windows in heaven, could this thing be? And he said, and then Elijah said, In fact, you shall see it with your eyes, but you shall not eat of it. You shall see it with your eyes, but you will not eat of it. Why? Because this man did not believe the word that came out of the preacher. This man did not believe the word that went forth. Come on. Real faith is believing the word. Come on. Real faith is trusting the word. Real faith is applying the word. Real faith is living the word. Your proof of faith is in your application. It's your believing. It's, it's, it's believing the word above everything else. Abraham believed beyond. He, he believed beyond hope. Abraham believed when in the natural it didn't make sense, but because God said it, he believed it. And therefore, he was called the father of faith because he believed when God spoke. And so this uh, Elisha says, um, hear the word of the Lord, and then he gives the, the word, he speaks the word, but then someone doubts. You know, it's uh, the re many times it is our unbelief that gets in the way of our breakthrough, of our miracle. It's our unbelief. And so he says to this, this, this guard, this officer, this soldier, he says, okay, you're gonna, because of your unbelief, you're not going to receive it because of the unbelief. And I'm reminded of the spies that were sent out. Remember, um, this, the Moses sent out the spies to, to, to check out the promised land and only two came back with a positive report. Only two came back with a report of faith. And the, the, the ten others, they had a negative report. They did not come with a, with a faith report. And so those that believe receive. And those that don't believe, they will see, but they won't receive. And so, if we look in, in so that was verse 2. And now if we look in verse 3, it says, Now there were four leprous men at the entrance of the gate. Very quickly, this, this, um, this story has changed. We looked at the, the you know, the, the, the city and the king and, and Elisha. And now all of a sudden, where do, where do these four lepers come from? Well, let's have a look. Now there were four leprous, leprous men at the entrance of the gate. There were four leprous men at the entrance of the gate. And so these were lepers. These were lepers at the entrance of the gate. And they said to one another, Why are we sitting here until we die? Why are we sitting here until we die? And so yeah, we find that there are four lepers, four outcasts, four unclean men, four unworthy men, four men that were rejected, four men that, that had a disadvantage, four men that had a disease, four men that seemed to have no real future, four men that were looked down upon, four men that were ostracized, four men that were handicapped, Four men that were not rece well received. Come on. They weren't in the city. They were out of the city. But they were at the entrance of the gate. These leprous men were in a strategic position. And they were in a place of opportunity. Everyone else rejected them. But we're going to see how God use them come on somebody don't allow victimization to to deny sanctification hallelujah don't allow a victim mentality to overcome your life and so 
That is something that I really want to speak to you today. Those that are listening today, you might look at your situation. You might see yourself as, as a leper. You might, you might see yourself as a person that is rejected. You might see yourself as a person that is handicapped. You might not be where you, where you want to be in life. You not, might not, you might feel that you've been rejected and you've been uh, cast out. But I want to tell you something that when you, that when you um, step out in faith, God can turn things around in, in a few hours, in, 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 in just a day. You can be the answer that, that someone is waiting for. And so don't rely on a city that is under siege. And so these men, they were relying, for a moment, they were relying on a city that was under siege. Victims rely on cities that are under siege. In other words, the victims rely on handouts. Victims will rely on, on um, the pity of other people. But a victor is one that walks in faith, that, has, that, 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 that understands who he serves and who he represents and understands that, that they are victors, that they are overcomers. Come on. And so if we look, yeah, it says, Now there were four leprous men at the entrance of the gate, and they said to one another, Why are we sitting here until we die? Why are we sitting here until we die? In Romans 6.14 it says, For sin shall not have dominion over you for sin shall not have dominion over you the enemy will not have dominion over you and so these lepers that weren't that that weren't didn't have the be, didn't have the best disposition in life they 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 were they were lepers but then they realized listen if we just hang around here and do nothing we're gonna die if we just sit down and 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 you know feel sorry for ourselves and uh, sulk and cry and uh, think you know think back to how it used to be no they didn't they didn't think like that they didn't talk like that they realized that they had to do something they realized that they have to make a move if we say we will enter the city the famine is in the city and we shall die there don't rely on a city that is under siege you need to rely on jesus christ come on don't rely you can't rely on on the government don't rely on on things don't rely on material positions don't rely on your money you you got to rely on jesus christ this king said Remember the words of the king, this powerful king? He was crushed to nothing. He said, hey, if the Lord does not help you, where can I find help from? Come on. And so, yeah, it, they go and they say, and we shall die there. And if we sit here, we die also. Now, therefore, come, let us surrender to the army of the Syrians. If they keep us alive, we shall live. And they kill us, we shall only die. So they make up their mind. Look, they're, they're saying, look, if we go into the city, we're going to die. If we sit here, we're going to die. If we go to the Syrians, there might be a chance, but we also might die. But, the, but there's a better chance for us going. There's a better chance for us taking a risk. There's a better chance for us stepping out in faith. And a lot of times it is fear that paralyzes you to step out in faith. But you've got to get the word. Elijah, this, the verse chapter 7 started with, with Elisha. Elisha said, hear the word. Hear the word. For you to get the faith, you need the word. Come on. And so... They decide to get up. And so, um, now therefore come, let us surrender to the army of the Syrians. If they keep us alive, we shall live. And if they kill us, we shall only die. And they rose at twilight to go to the camp of the Syrians. So they woke up very early in the morning at twilight to go to the camp of the Syrians. And, then, and when they had come to the outskirts of the Syrian camp, to their surprise, no one was there to their surprise no one was there verse 6 for the lord had caused the army of the syrians to hear the noise of chariots and the noise of horses and the noise of a great army so they said to one another look the king of israel has hired against us the kings of the hittites and the kings of the egyptians to attack us therefore they arose and fled at twilight and left the camp intact. And so what we see here, it says there in verse 6, For the Lord has caused the army 
of the Syrians to hear the noise of the chariots. And really that was the intervention that they were trusting for. That was the intervention that, that Elisha had prophesied about. That is the intervention that the king was praying for and hoping for. And so I want to tell you that, that God will intervene on your behalf. God will intervene when we believe and act on the word of God. Come on. And so what happened was they said, therefore they arose and fled at twilight. So imagine that when the, when the, uh, when did the when did the four lepers decide to go to the camp? Twilight. When did the when did the uh, Syrians flee? The Bible says at twilight. It is when you make that decision. Come on, when you make a decision, God God uh, begins to move. And so yeah, um, in verse eight. And when these lepers came to the outskirts of the camp. They went into one tent and ate and drank and carried from it silver and gold and clothing and went and hid them. Then they came back and entered another tent and carried some from there and also and went and hid them. So this was like it was they struck, they struck it big time. They went into this, they went into this enemy's camp. There was gold, there was silver, there was food, there was there was um, donkeys and clothing. The Bible says and and food and drink. And all these things. And then they said to one another, we are not doing right. This day is a day of good news. And we remain silent. You see, these lepers was the, was the answer for, for, for a nation. Come on. Instruments of deliverance are unclean lepers. God used these four lepers to deliver a city. They felt within themselves that, that they were not the most, you know, they weren't the most qualified. They were not the most informed. They were not the most worthy. In fact, they felt unworthy. These were lepers that, that uh, they were rejected. They were unclean, but God used them. Come on. If God can use four lepers, he can use you. If God can use four lepers, he can use me. But these, these, these uh, lepers... They went back. They went back and they, they, they brought the good news. Come on. We are the church today and we are supposed to be the evangelists. We are to bring the good news to the people that are suffering, to the people that are downtrodden, to the people that, that feel helpless and hopeless. We are called to preach the gospel. We are called to preach the good news. We are called to, to um, pray for the sick so that they may be healed. We are called to go and pray for the demon possessed. We are called to go and win souls for Jesus. We are the evangelists. Come on. And so what happened was is the, the, the time is up, so I can't read everything. But what happened was is, is that this city was delivered. And that, that, um, that officer... Remember the officer that did not believe Elisha's words? Well, when those gates opened up, the Bible says that the, the, the people trampled him and, and he died. He saw the deliverance, but he didn't partake of it because of his unbelief. He did not believe in the word that was spoken. And so today, I want to encourage you. Today, you might feel like you're alone. You might feel like you're rejected. You might feel... Like you're not worthy. But I want to tell you, Jesus Christ of Nazareth died for you. He died for you. He went to the cross. He took our sins. He took your sins. He took my sins. And they were nailed upon his body. And because Jesus uh, took the sins of the world, my sins uh, can, can be washed away. And I can be cleansed because Jesus um, when I receive Jesus, when I ask Him to forgive me of all my sins, when I ask Him to wash me of all my sins, He will, he will wash me, He will cleanse me, and He will make me righteous. And so when we come to Him, He needs to be our focus. We need to look unto Him, the author and the finisher of our faith. We need to look to Him. We need to run to Him. Unless the Lord builds the house, the builder labors in vain. Unless the Lord watches that city, the, the watchman watches in vain. Unless the Lord delivers us, how can I help you? The king said, but we have Jesus. You are not 
a victim. You are a victor. Don't, don't, don't sit around and feel sorry for yourself. If you are born again, if you have Jesus, you are, you are no longer a victim. Come on. You can no longer be a victim because greater is he that is in, is in you than he that is in the world. Come on. You have Jesus on the inside of you. You have the Holy Spirit. You have the blood of Jesus. I want to encourage you that you can make it. With Jesus on your side, you can overcome. God can turn things around. He can change things around. Within 24 hours, He can turn your situation around. But would you believe? Would you step out in faith? Hallelujah. Well, I pray you've been blessed, church. I want to pray for you before I go. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I pray for those that are listening today. Lord, they, they might be identifying with, with, this, with this passage, with, these, with this um, city that was under siege. Lord, I pray for their deliverance. I pray for their healing right now. I pray, Lord, for, for their provision right now. I pray, Lord, that that spirit of depression, that you, that you bring it out in the name of Jesus. And I declare the love of God. I declare the, the joy of God, the peace of God to fill your heart, your mind, um, uh, your body. Fill you with the love of Jesus. Father, I thank you for the blood, the blood that covers everyone today. Thank you, Jesus that you are with us. Thank you, Jesus, that we can turn to you. Thank you, Jesus, that you are our deliverer. When we call on your name, you will save us. You are mighty to save. We call on your name, Jesus. We call on your name today, and we say thank you for deliverance. Thank you. Thank you that you deliver us. Thank you that you save us. Thank you that you strengthen us today. Every person listening today, I thank you for your blessing on their lives. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. There we go, church. God bless you. Thank you for joining us today. Um, I'll see you at the, the service on, on the weekend. Make sure you get to the, the physical services. And also, Pastor Deal, he continually shares messages on YouTube and on Facebook. And also at, the, at our local services throughout UAE, Pastor Deal also shares at our multiple services. So make sure you get connected. Stay connected. And uh, I'll be seeing you next week. God bless you for now. Bye-bye.